In this question we have, we're given that if x is greater than 3, which of the following is equivalent to 1 divided by 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 3. The reason why they're just putting this restriction about x being greater than 3, you know, you wouldn't want to say, you know, if you left that out, the problem is at x equals negative 2 and at, at x equals uh, negative 3, this thing could be undefined. So, you know, you've got some math person making th these tests up, and they're just trying to be crystal clear that there's no ambiguity and no, no places that, that a student could, um, you know, make an argument about it necessarily not being equivalent. So that's the reason why that comes in there. So... To me, honestly, I could look at this problem, and based on the answer choices, I could immediately pick out the answer without doing any work whatsoever. Let's do the work first, and then let me point out why I can do this problem without doing any work, because that's a useful time saver, right, on these tests. Okay, so the first thing is we've got 1 over, one over x plus 2. I'm going to leave some space here. Plus 1 over x plus 3. So what we're going to do is just try to simplify this fraction. And what I'm going to, the way I'm going to start doing that is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the denominator as a single fraction. So to do that, since I'm doing addition, I've got to get common denominators. So this one has a denominator of x plus 2. This one has a denominator of x plus 3. I would have to multiply top and bottom of my first fraction here by x plus 3 and I would have to multiply top and bottom of my second fraction by x plus 2. Okay, so 1 still just chilling out on top, just watching the action. Okay, so in the numerator I would have x plus 3 of my first fraction. And if we distribute, we would have to foil it out. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is going to be positive 3x. 2 times x will be positive 2x. And then we have 2 times 3, which is 6, positive 6. For my next fraction, I would have x plus 2 in the numerator. The same thing, I mean, I'm multiplying x plus 2 and x plus 3, so I'm going to get the same denominator. I'm going to have x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. Okay, so again, sometimes I put little wings on my big fraction just to help me visually break it up. Okay, so we've got this common denominator now of x squared, 3x plus 2x, well that's just going to give us 5x plus 6. In the numerator of the bottom fraction, we would have x plus x, which is 2x. We would have uh, positive 3 plus positive 2, which is positive 5. If you take 1 over a fraction, so for example, if you have 1 divided by a over b, what that does is it just flips the fraction. You would, this would be the same thing as b over a. So in this case, I have 1 over this fraction. It's just going to flip it. I'm going to get x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by 2x plus 5. And that's going to be my answer. That was answer choice number b. Or number b, letter b. Answer choice b. Okay, so to go back what I said a second ago, how could I figure this out without doing any work? And basically, you know, I guess I'm quickly doing this in my head. But what I'm going to, what I'm recognizing is, is I've got one over some stuff, one over, uh, you know, I'm going to have one over a fraction when I combine this, which is going to flip the fraction. So I'm kind of thinking about this idea. It's going to flip the fraction. And I think, well, once I um, get a common denominator, I'm going to have x plus 3 times x plus 2. I know that's going to give me something. I'm going to have 1 over something involving x's, and then something involving x squareds in the denominator, right? I've got a, uh, I'm going to have x plus 2 times x plus 3. That's going to give me something squared. So when I flip it, I know that my answer should be something involving x squared, over x, you know, just x to the first. So when we do that, I look at my answer choices. The only thing that, the only one that satisfies that would be b. That's the only one that has a quadratic over a linear function. So I know that that would be the correct answer.